Well, 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 well. Here we go. Here we go, fellas. This is it. This is what it's all about. Welcome into Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. It is Championship Sunday, baby. It's here. It's me, Adam Savage, your host. I'd like to be alongside the brilliant, fantastic Jimmy Fantastic and Andy Davo. Lads, we had a great day yesterday, but today it all comes down to this, at the end of which we'll have our champion of our Blood Bowl 3 this season. Amazing, Andy. Amazing stuff. Oh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't wait. I, I'm super curious to see whether Strider is going to get past the the, 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 the multi-different ways the humans play humans, <laughs> or will safety play out and Strider sees him back to uh, the, the grand final. Yeah. Jimmy, what's your vibe on, I mean, yesterday, let's, let's just reflect yesterday for a second here. What a day we had. What was what was a big surprise for you? Any highlights? What um, what was the, the main, apart from obviously Andy putting things in the freezer, which blew our minds, by the way. <laughs> that still kind of, I still can't quite swallow that. Um, talk to us about yesterday. What was the main thing that really stuck out for you? I mean, Strider, Strider Diamond, I thought was really good. You know, good technical football and, uh, you know, Big surprise, really. Orcs, Orcs are a big underdog, but Diamed's been playing great, so you know maybe not too much of a surprise. And then, of course, Cold Troop versus Inarion was just a wild, crazy game. Love to see that. So yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, the, the you know, can the humans beat lizards again? Can they do? I love the, I love the analogy of the big boss yesterday. The big the boss <laughs> fights coming our way. You've got like a, a Goro and Shang Tsung, or maybe a Sagat and M Bison coming our way. Whatever platform you preferred, um, let us know in the chat which you did. Um, I think that was really interesting. That Cold Troop has got to go through these kind of different stages to get to that kind of championship. I think he's kind of gone through the entire pack. We'll have a look at the brackets in a second. But he's really had to go through the different kind of like some of the best players out there in order to get to this lower bracket final. It feels like he's beaten absolutely everybody. Uh, and played them all, apart from me. Uh, apart from uh, yeah, apart from me. He's played like everybody, and he's beat them all in different ways. But but one thing that has been consistent is that he just has this like he has crazy in his locker, whereas a lot of the other top players seem to not. They just revert to type and play safe. Yeah, so exactly. He's, he's great to watch. He's great to watch. We can't wait to watch. We know you guys can't wait to watch it as well here. Uh, let's have a look at the format of exactly how we got here to our Championship Sunday, courtesy of Level 3 Season Finals. Uh, it all began with qualifications way back when. Way back in the past, fellas. Uh, obviously, there was a play-in, 56 players. Uh, Jimmy, we got to 16 players for our Season Finals, and uh, that's when things really started cooking. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, various ways to get in the play-ins and stuff. Uh, you mostly ladder. Um, Cold Troop finished runner-up in the NAF kickoff event. Lost to a very, very great coach in the final, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> and who was that coach, Jimmy? Uh, it was me. It was you. It was you. Yeah, it was you. Of course it was. He had to, he had to, he had to get it in, did he? He had to get it in. And I respect it. I respect it. Uh, but uh, that's exactly how we got 16, 16 players last weekend. You know, we were there. You were part of that kind of uh, makeup as well. One of those players there. And thank you for actively being here and not going through to the final. Because Andy obviously could have won the entire thing, but chose to be here with us on the desk, didn't you, Andy? I, I don't want to go as far as to say I threw the game, but... I mean, Absolutely, it's better to be here. Yeah, right? you, you can draw your own conclusions, folks. You come to your own conclusions at home. Um, but obviously, uh, you're part of that 16. I mean, we saw some some big kind of like you know, players obviously going out very early on as well here. But what are they all gunning for? They're gunning for a top, top prize here. Our cash prizes. What exactly are they? Well, here they are on screen. You can see right here, right now. Uh, we started with 16 players in our competition. Yesterday, we had six. Now we're down to three. So whatever happens today, $600 to third place. Second place, 1300 2000 big ones, Jimmy, going to the top spot here of course and the accolade being season finals champion but two thousand dollars i mean that's a that's a lovely bit of cash that's a lovely weekend away somewhere in the country brilliant yeah and like <laughs> <laughs> you know it's great cold trip he's already got the 600 each each further match he wins it's 700 more isn't it each each matchup so yeah really nice yeah really absolutely nice. yeah and obviously you know uh, two thousand what would you do with two thousand dollars andy what would you what would be the first thing you would you would do with that uh, so I wanted to go to America, and my sneaky thing is if I'd have won all the way through, uh, I'd have booked a flight uh, to America and gone to a tabletop tournament out there. That's that's my thing. I love that. Love that. That's, I love that. Well, it will happen. It will happen one maybe, day. Not maybe. this season, obviously, but maybe next, we'll, we'll see what happens next season. Uh, let's take a look at uh, exactly what's coming your way here, the schedule of our day two. What can you look forward to uh, here on the official broadcast uh, on Nacon's Twitch channel? You can see here. Uh, this is our schedule for Sunday. Obviously, we have our lower bracket final first and foremost. This is a best of one, followed by our grand final, which is a Best of three, uh, Diamed. They're waiting, ready and waiting to see exactly how this one plays out here uh, in our in our lower bracket final. Here, I mean, I mean, Cold Troop is, uh, you know, we, we say a, a very you know, difficult player. He's, he's had a fantastic run thus far. Uh, Strider as well here, Jimmy. I mean, what do you think is going to happen here? I mean, best of three as well. That's that's a, that's a real that's a marathon, not a sprint. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting to see. You know, we, it's just not something we see in in online blood ball or tabletop blood ball. Any kind of blood ball, best of three is pretty unique. And uh, Diamed's got the advantage of just sitting back and watching this match first, hasn't he? So that that's he's got a nice bit of an advantage there for going getting through the winners bracket. Yeah, although Kaljuk has had all these different games back to back, he's kind of used to this by now. And he's kind of been through the grind. Were they kind of we embracing the challenge here? Do you think? Oh, absolutely. I, I think it'll be interesting to just see whether or not he he can get some some crazy going on early on and get a big advantage. And will he high roll the lizards, or will Strider's pr predictably safe pressured approach uh, just stifle the, the humans and stop them scoring? The, the other thing that I really want to see is whether or not. Um, Call Troop is going to use sure hands on the thrower at some point today. <laughs> I, I really hope that he, he, if he's watching, yeah, please just try it once. You're going to love it. You, you're going to love it. You're going to yeah. love it. Use the sure hands. Use your sure hands. Uh, let's have a look as well our brackets too. Exactly what um, you know. If you were just joined us here, you've not seen what exactly what's happened the last kind of couple of weeks. But don't worry, we got you covered. Here you have a look at this. Uh, this is our winners bracket first and foremost. Here you can see exactly how we whittle things down. Uh, and Diamed there is ready and waiting in the winners bracket. But Jimmy, I mean, some big matches there, big scores, um, some upsets. What have been the kind of like any standout matches in the winner bracket for you personally? I mean, funnily enough, Diamed right. He, he took out one of the favourites in the first round, Elliot there. Then he beat the odds beating Underworld with Orcs. Uh, not not everybody can do that, can they, Andy? Uh, <laughs> Cheers, Jim. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> he, got a, he got a nice racial matchup versus Hiru with the Dwarves, and then and then a bad one versus Strider, and he beat the odds versus Strider. So, yeah, great performance by Diamond. He's been playing really great recently, playing lots as well. You know, he was top of the ladder for most of the season. So, yeah, great stuff from Diamond there. Yeah, how about yourself, Andy? What else uh, jumps out off the page for you? So, I mean, the, the, the Artemis uh, me game I thought was quite interesting in the first round. We, we, we saw a different sort of side of Artemis. He, he put a lot of effort into that game there. Um, and then the, the other one that stands out was the Strider Art game, where that was, again, like two sides of the same coin. He played very well in the first round, uh, and it was a different side of him. He was a little bit more l loose, I think, would probably how we'd describe it in the, in the third round. Uh, and the Strider game, yeah, Strider just went through him. That was it. We obviously saw our Diamond Strider game yesterday on uh, on on the Saturday. A Diamond progressing through Strider, going down to the lower bracket. You can see exactly how that looks as well here. And we, uh, boy, have we had a, a real journey. You can see Kaljuk coming in there to lower bracket round two and just managing to get these. I mean, scoring. I mean, scoring twice every one of his games all the way to the onto this final. Is I mean, that's it. Just goes to show that there's proof in the pudding there that Kaljuk, you know, when he when he plays a certain way, he manages to notch those those touchdowns, which obviously are the are the key factor here going through to the next round here. Jimmy. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a great, great performance. And, you know, <laughs> see, the big one there is beating Cruz 2-0. I mean, not many people would have picked anybody to beat Cruz. And, you know, he, he got he got the first round match against Elliot there in the loser's bracket. I mean, that was a huge, could have been the final, Christopher versus Elliot. So that, I think that was the big, the biggest, biggest scalp for Cold Troop there. And, uh, yeah, you know, in Aryan as well. In the, I mean, that crazy match yesterday, that was a, that was a real big one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I don't know. He's beat four people that Twitch chat are going to know, right? He's beat Inarian, He's beat uh, Eliod. He's beat Crucifer, uh, and he beat Crystal Hunter. All right, all class opponents in their own right, and he's beat all of them. Right to go oh, four and zero oh against that is is some doing. Yeah, it really I mean, is. Do you think? Do you think there's? I mean, using humans as well as the, as his particular race. Do you think that's given him a kind of a, a, an edge in any capacity? Is that has he just utilised them like superbly well? Uh, he has, and, and I think it's strange that the, every round we've kind of like, oh, he's, he's not going to get through this one. <laughs> and then somehow he's just done it. He's come out of nowhere and done something. And, and I, I, I do accredit it to his, he's got crazy in the locker. And I love it. I think it's great. It's got crazy in the locker, just like this guy. <laughs> Jimmy is a loose cannon. <laughs> Genuinely. Genuinely. Uh, right, let's take a look at our teams in particular. Who exactly is going to be competing in this lower bracket funnel? Let's meet them. Uh, first up, we have ourselves, of course, Cal Troop versus Strider. This is what we're going to see. Humans versus uh, Lizards there. I mean, this is going to be uh, a, a real kind of battle here. Lizards, we know, are so strong, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Seven strength four plus players. And uh, usually, you know, usually a bunch of block in there. And it's it's hard for any anyone to deal with. And uh, humans, it's a it's a bad matchup for humans. But Coltrude beat Lizards three times in the NAF kickoff event. Uh, just incredible performance from him. So. Can he keep doing it? Yeah, can he keep doing it? Let's see exactly what Cool Troop is bringing to the party. What's he brought along with him? 13 players. And, uh, I mean, he's managed to, to surprise us so much so far. I mean, Andy, I mean, at this point, anything is possible. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, He has got some nice skills here. The, the Tackle Blitzer, which is the fifth one down. 
very helpful in this matchup. The Mighty Blow Blitzer gives him the high roll variance to, to killing Saurus. He's got three guards, so he can fight them a little bit because the, yeah, the Lizard team has got none. Uh, and he's got one thrower and one catcher. One thing that's slightly surprising here is, yeah, as he loves the catcher so much, it, it, he could have just played two catchers, and then that would have given him more um, mobility rather than taking a thrower and a catcher. But one of the games he did use the thrower to, to long bomb it over to a catcher. Uh, I think that was in the Crucifer game. Uh, so he, yeah, he's, he's working for him. He's yeah. absolutely working for him. He could have just taken a second catcher as well, right? But it, but he took the uh, he took the assistant coaches, and they they were actually crucial against Denari. He, he picked up two extra rerolls, mm -hmm. and you know the the standard build is a throw it and two catchers, but uh, the, the assistant coaches paid off am amazingly for him. Indeed, right? Let's see exactly who Cal Troop is going up against here. His opponent, it is of course Strider with the Lizard Men. I mean Strider. I, I, let's walk through his his lineup uh, here as well, Andy. And um, I, I'm sure many people at home are always wondering what makes Lizard men so strong and what makes Strider such a tour de force in this matchup? Oh, so we've seen it in other previous games. It's effectively, it's the top seven. That roster, they can, Lizard men are so strong that all the players are strength four or five that they can play most teams seven versus 11 and still come out on top. We saw it in the uh, Diomed game. He was bullying the Orcs with only seven players. It's like going into a fight with one harm time behind your back <laughs> and still hammering someone. <laughs> right, it's outrageous. <laughs> It really is. I mean, Strider, I mean, again, I, I, you think about kind of yesterday as well. I mean, Strider's probably watching, you know, what, exactly what's how things are unfolding and seeing that culture's pr uh, progression as well. Do you think that would have knocked confidence at all for Strider, thinking, okay, this guy can really pull anything out of the bag here. I've got to think about every single possible play, like, yeah, we would do anyway. But is there kind of, what is, is, is you pricked up thinking this this could be quite quite a match that I'm, I, I, it's the best of one, anything, anything's possible. Anything's possible, and Cold Troop's a bit of a loose cannon, you know? Normally, you, you get people have a style, right? Elliot and Crucifer, very very solid and safe, and then Inarion and Crystal, a bit more adventurous, but Cold Troop switches from turn to turn completely on, you know, from one, one extreme to the other. So, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be difficult for Strider to, like, predict and, and anticipate completely, yeah, unpredictable. Unpredictable. It's complete. He's predictably unpredictable. <laughs> He's, pred <laughs> He's predictably... Did we say that could be like a t-shirt yesterday? We could add it to the Jimmy Fantastic merchandise line that we'll bring out soon, along with the calculators we talked about oh, too. Yeah, That's yeah. definitely going to be a thing, by the way. <laughs> uh, I hope the game is almost ready to uh, to jump into, and very, very soon uh, we'll see how this one will unfold here. Uh, let us know, of course, in the chat as well, who you think at all times is going to be going through uh, to the next round, who's going to win this. Remember, this game particularly as well, $600 for third place, $1,300 for, sec for second place, so $700 on the line in this game. I mean, that's... a uh, that's a that's a i mean does that add pressure too i guess in some capacity uh I, th I think it makes you feel nervous right you you'd get to the crunch dice rolls and you would think if i make this three plus i just earned 700 quid so yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. it's not just your typical three plus that's going to be rolled here someone is going to go home on a failed three plus ah, but who will it be right let's dive in it is time to go into our lower bracket final here it is of course cal troop versus strider let's know in the chat who you think is going all the way to meet diamed in our grand final best of three later on today here on the championship sunday for now though it's over to andy and jimmy let's sink our teeth in thank you very much yeah thanks very much adam uh, yeah amazing stuff uh Strider has won the toss here, elected to receive, and we've again we've got this deep rule of five, Andy. I I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it. Right? I, 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 we we speculated that maybe to blitz it you have to come a bit further forward, and maybe you can isolate it, but that that's that's speculation. I'm not sure. No, and he he, he, he's, he was using it against Artemis, wasn't he? You know, yeah. Underworld and Lizard Men. This is so it's not matchup dependent. This is just his formation, just, I guess. Yeah, it's just. It's what he does. Mm. It's what he does. Like versus dwarves, you could understand GFI to blitz with a uh, with a long beard, or like you know the extreme range of a blitzer, or for example against undead. I I set up you know sometimes quite deep versus undead, so you just can't get blitzed by the mummies. But uh, he just does it all the time. Interesting. Yeah. On the ball, gets the free catch attempt, and he got high kick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> classic classic chameleon skink. Doesn't look like he's going to go for the three dice on the Crocs, right? Because the Crocs normally is on an end at this point. Because um, you'd be blocking left to right or right to left. That Crocs hit is not happening. And I, I, I would want to take the free hit here. He, he might. What he might do is he might he might do it last because because of the setup being so deep, he can just he could just not max blocks. Do you yeah. see what I mean? And then, oh, and so then we, get it that so way. So if you don't knock one of the first two out, like you're going to block straight forward. 
the one you don't knock over, that's actually the blitz and it keeps your formation intact. Yeah, yeah. Like half a half half diagonally as well. He could he could like block this one, then bring this guy in and stuff like this. Yeah. Ooh. Oh wow. Interesting. Oh. Uh, and we're back. It's misclick. <laughs> <laughs> misclick, yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Safe moves first. Ooh. Nothing safer than pausing the game. You can't lose if the game's paused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've just seen the Chameleon's kick, but I guess that, like, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because he's be moving in behind is, is interesting, because normally you'd go in front. Yeah. I guess he's just off chance of catching it on a failed pickup, because, of course, you don't want to you don't want to actually pick it up on the Chameleon's kick. You want to catch it from the kickoff. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're not catching it... There we go. Right, so then we know where the Blitz is. Uh, 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 chat, I think there is, yeah, there is, in fact, a straw poll that's gone up, which is, who do you guys think will win? So, uh, we're sort of curious, what do you think? Uh, and we'll talk about that in a little while. So, please do pile in with your uh, your prediction using that straw poll. Hmm. So, only one AV break, right? Yeah. No removals. And the deep Saurus. He's running out of time on, like... You shouldn't... You don't want to be spending time bank here. No. But it, it is quite critical, right? The stabilization phase, as Dionysian tried, attempted to popularize. <laughs> it's it's not the uh, tidiest of names, but, I mean, this is pretty solid, right? He's got the whole team um, together here. It's pretty... This is a pretty nice start to a drive. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't like, you know, damage, of course, but... Aside from the damage, th this is a pretty, pretty great start for Strider. He got everything all together. And, and unlike in the Orc game last, he didn't. he's not failed to pick the ball up. So he's now got it, and the two re-rolls can be spent doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, one of, one of the bad things that can happen is the humans can use their speed and pressure. Though not so much with Cold Troop, with this deep defence. Really, it's mm. really, it's, he's a maverick, isn't he, Cold Troop? Do you, yeah, do, do you wonder if it's maybe, like, we normally, if you were rule of five, fly the forward, you just get a fourth hit. You, you're eating that fourth hit. Is, is it possible? That by setting far, far back, he's actually saved himself a hit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that did feed into it. The fact that he would have to blitz, then you know, would be able to come back too far afterwards. This, this could be the new meta, the call troop defense. Wow, we haven't had a new one invented in ages. Not since Gdanik, no. No. I do love the Gdanik offset LOS, uh, you know, kind of screen. Really, really cool defense. I think that's what I'd rather be doing with humans, honestly. You know, maybe just use their speed. Uh, Wasting their speed a little bit by uh, by a deep rule of five, but I guess they still got the responsiveness, haven't they? So it's decent. Oh, here we go. Oh man, Ooh. that was a bit of a bit of a you know arguably sloppy positioning, right? Because you know we had the blitz into another hit. Yeah. But the one in nine he lets him get away with it a little bit. Wait a second, he's just dodged. He clearly didn't see that there's a guy in front of the Crocs. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah, he got. Wait. He got. <laughs> the Anarian, the Anarian effect of uh, a player hidden by the crocs. Wow. wow, wow, that could have that could have uh, really cost him. Probably not cost him the game, but it would have put him a, under a lot of pressure from yep. out of nowhere. Wow. What what do you think about the the Saurus all being actually actively split up here? Right. So Strider ha normally is quite compact. He's choosing to go really wide here. You like that or not? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you want them next to each other, right? So they can block each other free. Stuff like that. You, you don't want them tied down. Agility 1 is pretty annoying a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping there, fellas. Uh, thank you guys all for voting on your on the straw poll there to see exactly who you think uh, is going to be kind of uh, walking away as the winner here. Uh, stri Any guesses? Who do you think the, the, uh, the, the audience at home, the lovely viewers, guess, fellas? I think, I think Strider is like the favourite, but, you know, to win in terms of percentages but i think call troop is the people's champ, <laughs> the people's <laughs> champ. okay okay and uh, what about yourself and yeah I, I i how do you predict call troop sensibly equally he's a little bit crazy and i love it he's, so. a, he's, a, little bit, he's a bit crazy as it stands as it stands uh strider has 61 percent of the votes to cal troops 39 percent so it's not i mean it's not too dissimilar i mean it's a, it, obviously 61 versus 39 is but at least you can see there's a there's a you know, there's definitely a, a, a support base there for Caltrip. People think that he can go the distance here, and we've seen it. It, it could be, it could be something magic. There's magic in the air. Do you feel that? 
Oh, there's yeah, magic absolutely. in the air tonight. I mean, around you two, <laughs> oh, it's always magic in the I, air, but still. <laughs> I can hear a lion singing. I can too. <laughs> it's weird. And uh, yeah, I can too. <laughs> can you feel? Never mind. Uh, but uh, I love that. Yeah, I think I think that's interesting. That um, you know, Caltroop is just one of these players. You said the people's champion there. I think because pe people love a bit of an underdog story, don't they? They love they love the the idea that it could be, it could be something. Uh, Special could happen. I mean, Strider is a formidable force. Diamond is too. But and Caltru, despite going doing so well in this competition, you kind of go. Imagine the humans made it through. Imagine they made it through. Humans orcs final could be interesting. Yeah, super it, interesting. And uh, Caltrips, you know, not come from nowhere, but not so well known. You know, whereas Diamond, massive force in Blood Bowl two, massive force la it's this season, right? Season two, he was see he was top of the top of the ladder for a long time this season and uh, Strider of course has dominated tabletop for a long time so Coltrip is the is the cat amongst the pigeons with his three for sure what what we are watching here though Ooh. is oh no 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 it's fine uh, is the safety of uh, Strider he is just picking apart that that follow on the human on the guard blitzer that got blitzed this turn probably shouldn't have happened he was more compact where he was and he just followed and it's just bent him slightly out of position which is now let the ogre get blocked which is now going to let the other guy get blocked and if strider gets yeah not even super lucky here he could just cause a, a, a chip and then that'll tip the drive around right he, he can suddenly he's taking three hits when he should have taken one yeah. and there we go and there's yeah, there's an av break which didn't really need to happen mm. Mm. and these are these are fine margins So, uh, kind of curious to see whether or not he moves the Crocs here, because the Crocs is performing quite a nice piece of screen, except there is a gap. I would like to see the Crocs come across to the right one, and then you can bring some of the, the cage kind of behind that. Uh, so I wouldn't risk it. I'd, I'd bring this guy across if I wanted to do that. You bring him over. Bring this guy, keep it all safe. Yeah. But you, you've got to try and protect. For me, I, I want to protect the Skinks, because I, I would happily hit a Skink even with a, with a Guard Blitzer uh, or a Thrower. Right, that, yeah. As long as it's got block, I don't care. Well, he's, he's moved this guy. If it wasn't for that guy, you could have moved all four back, right? You could have yeah. just literally moved all four back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, have, I would rather move this guy over than risk a failed Crocs. And there we go. If he had activated the Crocs, he would have rolled the one. Mm. Uh, Cold Troop got that one. But what, what he's gone and done there is he's stood up the Guard Blitzer first. The Guard Ogre then now is not providing the assist. If the Ogre gets up, you can stand up the Guard Blitzer. If you don't get the ogre up, you kind of want to leave the guard blitzer on the floor for a turn because it's just going to take another hit, yeah, punch to the face. Wow, yeah. look at this. Yeah, I mean, well, he, the thing is that he's doing, right? He's taking hits to get hits, isn't he? Okay, he's man marking all of the Saurus now, but now it means he's got he's he, he's free to attack the skinks, isn't he? Yeah, and, and here that's he comes. What he's doing, yeah. Reroll Re this maybe? Yeah. No. That had the kind of the smell of the player that he was going to re-roll the hit there. I thought. Yeah. Because he's just tagged every single Saurus, so now it's going to be Skinks versus Blitzers. Is that? Why didn't he bring the? Is that a catcher at the yeah, back it's there? Yeah, catcher. Yeah. I'd I'd put that on, on the ball carrier as well because it's it now cancels all the assists off. Yeah, interesting. I I, I I don't I would at least bring him up, right? I would have at least yeah, brought him too, up about here. He's too far back for sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of hits. Yeah, this... Yeah, he's trying to be rubbing his hands together at this. Mm. And this is even a 3D if he... if he, I think he'll he'll come with this guy. Yeah, and he does. Could have made this a 3D, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making that a 3D. I think one of the other skinks goes in, stands to the right of where the blitzed Saurus is now. That's a nice, safe enough position. Um, and, it, and it gives you the... 15% more knockdown. Mm -hmm. Very important, isn't it, versus the tackler? Like it, it's still good. Like you know, getting a Saurus onto the tackler is nice. That that does inhibit yeah. his movement a lot. Yeah. But uh, but even so, like you'd obviously rather knock him down and kill him. <laughs> <laughs> got got to remember, this guy's in front of the Crocs ago. The Crocs is very very big, and this is like the natural view way to view the game, isn't it? This is how most of us play. Yeah. Um, 
we, we've got Elliot and some others play side to side like this. And it's interesting. I thought from a casting point of view, I thought that that isn't how I'd like to play. But I always wouldn't like, you know, when we got the beta, even from the beta, I thought, I wonder if that's going to be the future of casting games from that, like, you know, a bit like, uh, you know, watching football. That's how you see it. But uh, I don't think, I think people are used to seeing it the way they play, so they want it the way they play. But uh, this angle is, is an important thing to check when, you, when you're playing so that you don't yeah. do that five plus dodge. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I don't do that enough. I like this. He's now got him put a cage around it. The only downside is the ogre is on a cage corner. Yeah. Thankfully not stood up, but... It's a very worrying cage corner. Yeah, it's like, it's literally the only way the old, the uh, humans can overpower the lizards is, is the ogre, isn't it? It's the only natural overpower they have. Oh. oh, dear. I think I'd have picked that apart in a different way. I think the skink goes up, you throw the two dice on the, uh, on the edge, and then... You can activate the crocs if that's what you want to do. What? You, where would you put put the skink? Yeah, here? there. Yeah. And like if you want the if you want the attack. Hmm. But I think he wanted to hit these two, didn't he? That was yeah, the problem. He, he did. So hitting these two is, and I think it's it is better to hit these two, and it is better to have the skink over there. But then you you do run that risk of rolling the big one, which he did. Saved. Hmm. So now we've got. Two players free to run over. Mighty blow hit on a Saurus. Yeah, it's mighty blow hit, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I'd want that catch around the side because I, I mean, if I'm playing aggressively here, like Call Troop tends to, I want to go and fill in the squares in front of the ball. Like especially if I roll a pal. If I don't roll a pal, maybe not. It's interesting, isn't it? It's, it? There's a lot of value in having that player free to react. Because now, you, if that guard blitz is not there. You can push the Saurus straight down, and then you could go and stick that guard blitzer where the lying down Saurus is, and suddenly you're double marking the ball, and, and you're probably going to force a dodge, probably, and that's 13% to, to yeah, 11% to win the game. Well, I'll say win. Yeah. yeah. Get a T big turn advantage. Up. Yeah, 11% to get a big advantage. Oh, going to foul the Saurus. This could be massive. No, it's not. <laughs> could have been, though. <laughs> <laughs> could have been massive. Ah, oh, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nothing, nothing happened at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally an event. Nothing. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Oh, it's just, just yeah, just another Tuesday. <laughs> oh. He put a reroll into that, and it still failed. Yeah, yeah interesting. Uh, must have it's seen a big. Because it's there. yeah. I mean, I think he's assuming the wiz the wizards. Uh, and the lizards uh, are going to walk uh, to, to the round to the right. You presume? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Because I mean, that's that's where I'm taking this. It, if especially if the Crocs activates. Yeah, this will probably put in so many players to just get a 2D, right? Whereas if you just blitz with the Ogre, then it's a much, much lesser... I prefer, you know, it's, it's obviously people don't like blitzing with Ogres, right? It's a 2+, plus. you can't re-roll things. But if you just blitz with him, then you've got an instant two dice, right? And it's, yeah. it's, it's the one place we, where you can overpower the lizards easily. And then you could have still kept all of this relatively intact, but big commitment to blitz with a mighty blow on this side. Yeah. Uh, interesting that Strider's chose not to run further across. I know why, yeah, I guess he's trying to keep the, cro the croc's tail on a guard blitzer. Makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, the humans were out of position and you could have taken the left-hand side. It's... Is it, is it preference? I just think he wants to keep his uh, options open, right? You don't need to go from the extreme right to the extreme left every turn. Go, go. You know, he can go forward here, half go forward there next turn, half go forward there. There's a lot of things. I think just just go safe. Play play safe, right? You've got a pretty strong racial matchup here, lizardmen versus humans. Mm. So so just play play completely safe at every opportunity, <laughs> and uh, you know, hopefully, you just get the the grind out win. Yeah, well, he's, he's already got the isolated tackle, which is wonderful from a lizard point of view. Yeah, yeah, um, that absolutely matchup you want. Strand him on a strand him on a saurus, and you know you, you'll occasionally knock him down even as well. Lovely. So there is a surf on here. <laughs> yes, technically. <laughs> well, not anymore. So I mean, I think it was a terrible idea. <laughs> I'm not doing it. But I'm just saying it's just there, just just quietly. Yeah, I mean, it's still technically on as well, but no, of course he's not doing it. 
I wonder if he's going to blitz that Saurus or he's going to take 3D on the Skink. Because the value is the Skink, but the position is the Saurus. I mean, I think he's, I think he's going to go Skink. Has to. I don't think there's much in it positionally. And he's just so much more likely to hurt the Skink. Well, he's so much more less likely to get a hit a Skink in future as well, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about the follow on to the Crocs, though. That is rowdy. And he's got he's got a chain push out with the Saurus um, just below it. Yeah. Interesting. Do you move if you stride this turn? Are you going to be quite happy to just take the fight for one more turn? Yeah, I think just try and try and just beat everyone off. I think is the uh... <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Nice. <laughs> oh, started already. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's different, isn't it? Yeah, you don't you don't often I don't know about you, Adam, I yeah. Ooh, regularly dubskull. choose not to to do that. Top school. S spend time with Jimmy? <laughs> wait, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Huge dub schools there. KOs. Everyone loves a good KO. Interesting, wasn't it? Because like this is nothing to do with the important moves, you know? Like this mm. this block is the more important. So, yep. but then I guess you you could have eaten this, but you can't eat you can't eat you can't this. Eat it you can't yeah. eat this. So they, therefore you have to do the most. Oh, okay, it was important because he got the removal, <laughs> so he was able to just move the cage away. Yeah, this was pretty hard to tidy up actually. We've we've seen across the course of the last two weekends, we've seen a lot of our our matches, about a handful of them at least, uh, dictated by the fact there's been kind of early KOs. Like mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, we saw the Blackhawks yesterday, and you 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 had experienced it yourself against Art in your first round game in that kind of second half, which kind of took a turn for the worse very quickly. Oh no! Uh, oh goodness, we... Strider, what are we doing? Interesting, isn't it? That is super interesting. I mean, it was definitely on purpose because you can't miss this guy. So I guess it was the dodge blitz this guy to free up the Crocs, but then isn't the, isn't there someone in front anyway? So I just yeah. don't I don't know what was achieving. That's very interesting. Jimmy, did you predict Strider for this match? Uh, I did, yeah. Oh, Caltrip's going to win then. So that, yeah. um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. The problem is, though, I've predicted uh, uh, Strider to win. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be a bad call there. Well, maybe it's going to go overtime and then Caltrip's going to win. That That's a possibility. Right. That's, that's a, yeah, absolutely. And 60-40 went for, went for Strider. I, th I think that seems about realistic. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, saying that, right, even that failed dodge, he's not in loads of trouble. He'll be fine. He'll dig this out. Yeah, he's only got two turns left now. Yeah. But I, I, I predict at the moment he's just going to go up that left-hand flank because the humans are very heavily committed here. The Blitz is going to be on the Mighty Blow Blitzer and then the rest of the players is just going to run around the side. Yes, it's going to be mostly with skinks, but that makes it a little harder. Yeah, it was important dodge because, you know, having three guys on these two was pretty terrible. But now these two have been taken out. You know, he managed to rescue the tackler. But yeah, maybe it's a bit li too little too late from Call Troop here because, yeah, this is a pretty, yeah, it's pretty a switch, isn't it? strong switch. <coughs> not, not, not too strong. He's not going to get too deep here, but he should be able to get down the field a little bit. Yeah. I wonder if he should have committed the catcher, right? Commit the catcher up here or something. Yeah, and then just that stop that. That would have been pretty strong, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, he's dodging with a ball carrier. So he's going to go with a blitz on the lo one yeah, of the I line down the only way he, Yeah, that's the only, the only way he can get up, is this blitz. Only gets the push. The the human lineman with short hands? Yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, block. It's... Yeah, yeah, the, bl the block lineman, yeah, essentially. <laughs> So now where's he going to go with that? He's got to mark that, surely, with at least one of them. I think he needs to cage, doesn't he? So I don't, I don't think he can. I think he puts out this the chameleon in front. Yeah. And rely on the crocs marking all of these. I mean, this is pretty ropey, honestly. This is uh, this is not going to be a safe ball. Bro. Well, it's not going to be. It's it's not going to be super, super safe, super deep, is it? I guess he's going to put the ball here. Go for the double GFI next turn, yeah. So he needs a dodge, and next turn he'll need a... Or maybe he can just go up to here. I think the catcher can hit him, can't he? Yeah, maybe. 
That, that's where you want to be, right? So that you're just in, in full range. So it's a GFI. So it's it's either a it's either a GFI to get in range, or it's no GFIs here, but then two GFIs and the possibility of the catcher just pushing you out of range completely. So I think he has to be at least here. And here isn't as good as here, so I think it will be here. But he's got a dodge and GFI this turn. And then I guess you're using the skink behind the crocs to just try and solidify that a little bit. Yeah. It's tricky, though. Makes the dodge. You can't stand there. No, Literally has, can't stand there. Yeah. Do the GFI. And the catcher, is it double GFI dodge? Ooh, interesting. No, just double GFI. Yep, double GFI. Wow. And maybe pushes him into the crowd as well. Uh, well, no, not him in the crowd, the ball into the crowd if he pows. So you, you can't leave this. That no. skink, uh, for me, that skink just runs five squares kind of on a diagonal then. Because it's three plus stunty dodge. Because you've got to fix it. Yeah. Wow. That's his last reroll gone, surely. Surely you, you can't leave it. This. Yeah, you can't, can't leave it, can you? No. Hard though. He he... He... No, he no. rerolled it. He oh, re yeah, he... oh wow. Okay. He's out of yep. rerolls. Oh my goodness. That does stop him. Uh, that does stop Cold Troop maybe getting the scatter into the crowd because he has to blitz him from this angle now. I think he does have to one dice him as well. It's a skink with tackle. It's a KO. So the lizards are going to have a l well. They've, they've got the bench, haven't they? So that's their yeah. one bench. So that KO actually, at the moment, doesn't change anything. It would force the chameleon skink to be fielded on defense potentially, which Strider would rather have proper him not. Yeah, him not on defense. Okay, so he's burning the uh, the non both downs and um, and pals. Yep. Yeah, get, get a couple of bases up in case things go. Less than perfect. Well, one thing he could have done there, he could have pushed the crocs slightly to the right of instead of down, because then the guard blitzer could run diagonally down, depending on where the ball goes, and you give yourself a scoring threat as well potentially. Like, yeah, you, you've you've cut off an option. Yep. Or made it harder anyway. And you've also opened up like a chain potentially as well to get get, get crocs out crocs yeah. somewhere. Like, you know, maybe lend an assist or something. You know, who knows? Who knows what the board state's going to be at this. Well, I guess he's going to move this guard anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting place to just plonk that. Yeah, I think I would have rather put... Oh, wow, he's not blitzing the ball. Which would have been a knockdown. Oh, Ooh, I, can't, I can't get behind not blitzing the ball like that. No. It's interesting, isn't it? This is the thing, you know, Coltrick will go for the, you know, the aggressive Inarian Chunter-like players sometimes when, when we would want to play safe and then sometimes when we'd go for the things, he plays safe. It's really, really interesting. Where, Wait, where it, this is so solvable now. So solvable. Like, the Saurus on the half... Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Less solvable. Yeah. This, this guy's free, though, isn't he? Uh, yeah. One, two, three, four. Doesn't do a lot. How many squares from the end zone is he? Is he, is he exactly eight. eight? Yeah, yeah, eight. Oh, so it's, it's three, three, three with dodge. It, yeah. Th there's nothing clever. Dodge just down the sideline. Yeah. Which... I'd want a scoring threat. That that last dodge there, go and put that as a scoring threat because there's a good chance this doesn't work, and the, the throw a catcher combo is is stood in in prime position. Just toss it downfield. Yeah, yeah. I think this doesn't doesn't add anything. Doesn't add really. anything at all, though. No. I mean, maybe it did. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. GFI. But so hit this one, then block this one, and go that way. If you power them both. Maybe. That seems bad when you've got no rerolls. I feel like the three 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 is just better. It's three three pluses with the dodge. Jock says in the chat, yeah, did you take the blocks before the dodge? And and there's a there's a possible argument for wanting to do that now because you can't be scored on and you might want the damage, but it's low odds to cause any damage. So I I think I think not. I think the correct line of play is to do nothing. 
just take the dodges. I don't know, it's pretty tempting to blitz the tackler, isn't it? Pretty tempting to blitz the tackler. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't write off the tackle blitz. I think the other blocks are a bit greedy, unlikely to work, but I think I think the tackle blitz is one where Oh, is he gonna is he Oh it's a one day, right? Cause it's a it's a catcher. Any skulls? No. Nah. Wow. So someone with Samba can go and have a quick look. Right, what's three 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 with dodge? What's the probability? Versus three plus two plus. Because there's no way you're, you're not running a pow. Well, you might. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And I mean, that, that adds a significant chunk, right? The 16% to just work. But uh, I, f I feel like the dodge is, is correct. But I mean, surely Strider got it right. Yeah. What you don't want to see here is the Saurus get removed. If you Strider. Yep. I mean, say, I mean, if, if Coltrane's done it again, right? I mean, he hasn't won yet, but he stopped the Lizardmen scoring somehow with... You know, he just uses what he's got brilliantly. I like it. It's amazing. You know, humans are not like a tip-top race, right? They're what? Just, they're just not. What? There isn't a scoring threat off-screen or anything, is there? Like, we're not missing something here. Uh, I don't think so. No. 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 No, this isn't a catcher. Um, Foulosaurus? You yeah. don't foul the cross. Like, you don't... What? 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 I mean, he's, he's probably going to foul the cross. But then why isn't this an assist? Is he thinking there's another turn? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he put the reroll into it. We don't know what he was going to do. Yeah, like, surely you bring these two in and make a big gang foul like that. I quite like that because you've got, you know, you've got 13 players. You've, you've stopped them nil-nil here. If you, if you get rid of the Croxagor, then that's, I mean, that's huge for the second half, isn't it? I really like the, making the foul, but like, get those assists in for sure. KO back for Lizards, so it's it's as you were. As so you were. It's as, as you were. were. As you were, but now the advantage swings to Call Troop. He's weathered the storm. He's defeated them for the drive. You know, he, he kept it nil-nil. And you know, he's taken no removals despite heavy, heavy contact. It's quite a story, this. I, I, I like the way it's unfolding for Culture. I, I I love this, actually. I think, but I mean, when we think about the grand final coming our way as well, a best of three... Humans versus Hawks, Diomed versus Caltroop. Um, would it make up for a it would be a, a tougher competition, I guess, a tougher a tougher contest for Caltroop when Diomed's Hawks strong best of me. Um, it, it could be more difficult. Do you think for him? Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be really difficult. If if it, if it's Caltroop versus Diomed in the final, I think it's going to be really difficult for him. Yeah, I think Orcs are just a very strong matchup versus humans. Uh, ironically, because they've always been in the box set together, it, it was humans and Orcs for a long mm -hmm. time in the box set, and it seemed a, a strange choice. Like it m makes sense thematically, uh, you know, the Warhammer universe having Orcs and humans, uh, but and you know, you, like you really want humans in the box because people are humans, so they, they <laughs> identify with those. Um, but are you, you know, human, Andy? Are you human? Partly. Just want to confirm that. Partly. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. You know, he has this meat sniffing ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half human, half hyena. <laughs> he gives me a carcass a mile off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, we promised we weren't going to bring that back up. Sorry. Today. Hey, mate. We you promised. you went you went there with the uh, partly human, and then we just went down this rabbit hole of just nuts, and then here we are. That'd be make me a squirrel, wouldn't it? That would that would make you yeah half squirrel. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Thanks. You're always bright-eyed, bushy-tailed on these broadcasts. You know that oh, that's you know what I'm saying. Good. So there we go. You know. Very good. Just thank you. I'm here for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, the throw is going to go and stand near the ball again. Yeah. Oh, no, this no, is the catcher. The catcher. This, he's finally going to do the thrower pick no. up and hand off to the catcher. <laughs> no. Finally. So, finally. It's unbelievable, Jeff. Super duper noodle. I think that's that's just rumour at this point. That's not been confirmed, has it? <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> I was going to say, just don't ask what he does with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, Super Duper's uh, run with that already. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, anything about the game. <laughs> anything about the game. Has anyone got anything they want to talk about? The game. Uh, Just a thing. Like, well, I mean, I mean, so far, Caltroop's been, his performance has been nuts, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, I brought it back. Yeah. Do you know the... You know the <laughs> oh, my God.
God! Oh, he God. failed to pick up! He failed to pick up with the thrower, and then the catcher caught it. That's incredible! That's actually incredible! I hate you, Cold Troop. I hate you. <laughs> you shouldn't be allowed to do this. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> oh, wow. I could have sworn Cold Troop had something similar yesterday. Maybe not necessarily the kind of like that that catch, but something, something, went, something went wrong but worked in his favour. I could have sworn that was a thing. Maybe I'm kind of losing my mind here. It rings a bell. Yeah, it rings yeah. A bell. But, uh, There's a lot happened yesterday. A lot happened yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Every game was completely different. I mean, it was it was a really... It swung, you know, multiple ways like the course of those those four games we witnessed. Um, I mean, that first game, I think Artemis lost a lot of his players. I mean, earlier on, it, mm. was, it really kind of like, affected him and... Yeah, Caltrip just getting some some mad luck. And then then right, I think I think he was right on the touchdown line. Got ta taken out, went to overtime. There was lots of things that kept, it kept the story. The story just kept evolving. It yeah, was great to watch, yeah. wasn't it? It was it was great. Yeah, it's been a been a great a great day yesterday, and I'm sure it's going to be a great weekend, all told. And right. yeah, can Caltrip do it? Nice. I'm glad the clocks has gone and touched a few things there. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. Yeah, this is, this is like the standard kind of like strider, you know, just screening, right? Pretty conservative. Yeah. N not not massive contact. And then the contact you are offering is really hard for the humans to solve. Yeah. yeah I like this. This is good, yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah, again, look, touching on a diagonal. If you're watching at home, that's how you touch. Adam, you touch on diagonals. Your word's not mine. Okay, <laughs> yeah, 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 touch on diagonals. Mm -hmm. It's all about the angle, isn't it? It's all about the angles. Yes. I think, um, you know, for me, at this, in this particular situation, we're going to you know, turn 10 as it stands. Um, will Strider be kind of playing here to be uh, just continuously more aggressive to kind of force Caltrip into a corner? Or what do you think, Jimmy? Well, he doesn't have to. The, you know, it was only a nil-nil. Uh, had Caltrip, like, had some kind of scoring threat, turned him over for the one nil, then he would have to be aggressive now, yeah. Strider. But he doesn't have to be. So I think he'll I think he'll play his usual game, which is, you know, pretty safe. And then if something comes up, he'll go for it. Uh, that ended up costing him versus Diamond, right? Uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. That was that was really huge when he when he went for that. And he, then he won in nine the dodge, Kaz the skink. If if he hadn't gone for that, if he'd continued to just play safe, maybe he stops Diamond's score and maybe he wins and he's in the winner's bracket. But uh, uh that Ball seems a little on the outside. I'm concerned <laughs> for him here. It's fine. He's just gonna. He's just gonna power this Saurus here. He just needs to push right, and then that's. Perfect. Yeah, but like, but both down here is terrible. Ter yep. Like super terrible. Yep. Yes, yeah, so he's gonna GFI to shore up. Yeah. And now it's fine. And now, now he's got to throw the block, but the god, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Blitzer needs needs protecting as well. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is fine. But yeah, you can only get a 1D because of the <laughs> these two stopping them, so only the guard can come in. Obviously, he can't get anything in there, and he, can't, he could he could have put two players in here. So yeah, it was really nice, the, the positioning from Strider to, you know, not really aggressive, but also not 100% passive, was it? He, he, he put in yeah. a little bit. A, the rare effective half-mans, I guess, right? Normally, you want to go all-mans contact or everything off. And then Strider managed to get some contact, but safe contact, which is obviously fantastic. Yeah, and he's now getting to get a bunch of extra hits. He's got three extra hits and the Blitz. He should get four hits here. And if you can do this over multiple turns, the humans will lose players. And this is where you might then be able to find an opportunity to chase the ball. Yeah, yeah, this could be a huge turn. Five knockdowns, potentially. Spudnut says, why is it good to touch on an angle? Uh, Jimmy, do you want to take that? I mean, I, I literally just showed it. I, th I thought, I thought uh, so with this one here, there was players here, so the only way he could get assists was with guards, um, which, you know, he did and got a one dice. And here, there was no one he could, you know, he could only put in one guard assist there. He couldn't get anybody in here. So he could have made that a one dice at max. And here, he could have put two players here, but then he would have been on the, you know, on the sideline and in danger. So just none of these hits were easy to take. And this one he could have blitzed, you know, like this diagonal not doing anything because he's less strong. But with the, the, the strength advantage was was the thing. It was just uncounterable, basically, on the diagonal. 
Oh, God, now the chat are thinking about safe contact. Yes, you should always practice safe contact. <laughs> Unbelievable. Nice. So he is he's getting the hits now, but this is still a little bit tricky, the uh, the ogre, right? He's, he's not getting to hit the ogre here, potentially, because I'd rather put the crocs in a in a better position. Yeah, like there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I want the crocs. But the problem is, and he didn't get the pow. If he'd got the pow, it'd be really tempting to move the crocs in to make the 2D. But now without getting the pow, I guess that makes it easy to bring the crocs in. Oh, he rolls a 1. Ooh. That central Saurus. I think you throw the 1D on the non-guard lineman here, just to push it off. I think I think you kind of... Oh, oh. yeah, oh, he's got a skin crown. I hit the guard I hit the guard blitzer then. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Push it on the skink so it can't move. Stay put. Nice. Do you uphill the ogre? I would, but uh the strider yeah. doesn't. With it's it's tricky, isn't it? Because with two rerolls, if you if you roll the school you're a bit screwed. But it's much better position if you can get it off. Yeah. I'm not surprised you tried to get the ogre off, honestly, Andy. Oh, going back on some of my past life. <laughs> <laughs> some people wouldn't be surprised. But back to the blob hole, Adam. Back the, indeed, yeah. It's interesting. So, oh, so we're just taking the skin kit. You believe in reincarnation, Andy? You, um, that, are you one of those? Uh, you believe in that? <laughs> One of those. Are you, are you said about previous <laughs> life, and I was like, "You one of those? One of those reincarnation?" No, 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 no. Barely get carnated, let alone reincarnated. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> wow, this is uh, this is a bit of a struggle, isn't it? You know, lizards are better on defense than offense, I guess. Like they're not bad on offense, but they're brutal on defense. Just, we're giggling at the chat, so uh, <laughs> the, from what you guys don't see at home on the stream setup, we've got monitors in front of us, and then we've got extra little things that we can look at to see the chat. Um, frankly, it is effort to read chat sometimes. Um, if people who watch my stream will understand what I mean there. But it, yeah, it, it is some some of the things we we won't read them out loud, but they they do make us chortle. I, I suggested a live stream of Andrew's uh, Andy's microwave at home, just ba just cooking things <laughs> that we would never associate with microwaves. But the, the production team were like, not this time around. Maybe the next season finals. They haven't got the protective, uh, yeah. specialist protective equipment, so they can't. Or, or the budget for all the marmite that just keeps melting. <laughs> oh, maybe freezer cam. <laughs> Can you imagine a worse live stream than that? Just. <laughs> Just a few old chips <laughs> and forgotten cups of tea just left there, freezing over. <laughs> <laughs> this, this poor tea. Freezer cam. <laughs> God, sounds appalling. Yeah. So in the middle of that segue, we did have a boneheaded ogre, which is going to cause problems. Big problems, yeah. Because I think the skink can bully the, the lineman. And he might actually be able to get 2D on the ball here. He, he's got to roll yes. some powers, right? He's got to have a nice turn of kind dice. But it's possible. Uh, not even possible. It's like very probable. Very probable. This is uh, easy dice on the ball. Well, you heard it here, folks. Easy. Easy 3D. I mean, 3D, right? Because it's a catcher. So pretty easy 3D. Uh, the problem is it's a bit of, bit of a commitment, right? It's a bit of a commitment around the outside. And it's also... You know, round the back as well. So he, he might just he might just play safe here. Might just play safe. Interesting, in, interesting decision whether to go for it or not. Actually, I, I like. It. I, I'm going for it. I think I think he's going for it as well. I mean, it looks like that he's going for it with making that block first. Yeah. He just needs one friend for the skink. And then and then yeah, then it's then it is. Well, actually, no. He's going to block his own route, isn't it? Because the ogre is stupid. Oh, the skink, yeah, the skink has got a block sideways, hasn't it? Behind the ogre. Yeah, yeah. And you need you the assist through. here. You need the assist here. Yeah. And then block it there, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can bring a skink round as well if you want. Oh. Also, he's made this. So he's not going for it. Then he's not going for it. 
I, th I, you know what? I, I quite like not going for it. I think I feel like if if you go for it, it doesn't work. You lose. Get scored on, yeah. Yeah. So while it's one of those things that you spot and think, ooh, this could be good, also it could just be bad. And yeah, Stride is pretty conservative. I like this. Super interesting. Yeah, that's nice. Just for you, did me there. <laughs> <laughs> Ogre down. Yep. And then blitz the tackle, I think, maybe? Because then you can put a bit of pressure on that line. Or blitz one of the guards. Well, he hasn't not blitzed. Blitzing the tackler. He hasn't blitzed. Do you think he's going to use one of the skinks that is free in the top left and then use the... the yeah, I think he is. He's just going for... Oh, he's, he's going for 2Ds using skinks. Okay. This is skink assault. Oh, I don't like this because of the GFIs. Yeah. I don't, I don't. You just let that. it roll. Yeah. Fine. I, I reckon he thought, it's a shot to nothing. Go on then. I still, I, it's not that much of a shot to nothing, right? Committing two skinks, that was, mm. that was interesting. I guess, I guess <laughs> it just a push puts him on the crocs though, right? Yeah. Which is, yeah, okay, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe it was good. <laughs> and plus you've got this one to react if you get the pow. Like, you know, you, you could have, Obviously, he was going to dodge this one off. Blitz there into the crocs. And then, uh, you know, maybe he gets a, a bobble out. So, yeah, m maybe maybe it was worth it. Yeah, the humans don't want to move yet, but equally, they, they're going to struggle to you know, hammer all of these Saurus. Oh, yeah, they've got to try and move. I, it's a nightmare, that, you know. This is a great trade, right? Getting two for one over here. Oh, wow. Oh. Just the one D. The dirty 1D. I mean, you've got to do that, right? As, uh, as humans versus lizards, you have to take these 1Ds. He's going through the, going through the middle? Yeah. Guard, guard, up to the, the guard up in the top right, and then straight through this. Just going to 1D. No, I think it was well worth putting in the guard, because you really want the power, right? You can't break through without the power. So yeah. I think definitely worth putting in the guard first. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. No. But this is, this is their call troop, like, hallmark of how he plays. Yeah. I, I shall do something that you will not expect. <laughs> Again. Ooh. Oh, double skulls. Instant reroll. Now, this could go to overtime, and call troop's down to one reroll. Strider's still on two. That was a, that was a big reroll. And, and, you know, if he'd skulled the 1D Blitz, he'd have probably had to reroll that as well. I really like putting in the guard for the, yeah. for the Blitz. There. Just as Yim says, it's the final best of three. So this is the game before the final. The loser goes out uh, and walks away with 600. The winner goes on and is guaranteed a minimum 1,300. So this Rolls. is best of one. Euros, yes. Uh, that's not safe. No. <laughs> Hashtag not safe. <laughs> no, this is... We, do, we, like safe. we talk a lot about, like, um, you know... Factions and who's and, and and strong strength and depth and such. As for newer players, despite the fact that Lizardmen are so strong, are they a hard team to navigate to learn from? Would you say, Jimmy, or do you think they're a team that you could? I mean, I I started my my blood bowl journey with dwarfs, and it seems to be a collectively like the community were like, yeah, that's a, it's a good thing to do. But Lizardmen is that a good starting place? Do you think? Yes and no. If if you can believe this format, <laughs> if you can play this format specifically, mm -hmm. great starting place because they're coming with a six block already and they have that massive consistency mega consistency in with the new costings for a thousand tv when you make your initial blood ball team a rookie blood ball team they've got severe problems okay. to, to have all of your strong players you only get one re-roll and if you're a bad player you know because if you're a new player you are a bad player <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> that that one reroll is is just going to be a nightmare for you. You'll be making all the wrong moves, and you won't be able to rectify anything, and 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 things will spiral out of control. So, for 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 new players, yeah, there's there's that you need to, you need to be very safe and very good turn ordering. Yeah. And but the raw strength is is still strong, but it's it it is a bit harder to get the best out of them nowadays. Yeah. It's, it's the inconsistency, isn't it? They 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 swing wildly from. Then having no block didn't punish me in the slightest. To having no block absolutely crucified me. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it, it, in this format, they've got six block and it's perfect, and they don't have to score on Soros and things like this. They, they just get to dominate out the gate. Yeah. He's got lots of chain push potential here, but it's not super obvious what the correct chain push ordering is. Um, 
Because you could, you could fill in the square two above the ball carrier and blitz with the crocs and then chain push the ball towards the saurus and you could get loads of hits that way. Bit bonkers, very risky, could be done. Or you could try and chain push the opposite direction. Um, I guess he's blitzing this guy and then pushing, but well, then he pushes him out. Is he, is he done it wrong? So he's, he's going to block sideways here to push the ball carrier up one. And then I think he's going to try and use, he's got three saurus marking two, he'll free one yeah. and the guard will cancel but then he's still got the one assist. So I think he's going to get he's going to get two dice on the ball here. Yeah. But it's going to cost him all of his Saurus moves, which I guess is fine. And he has to not roll them both down in yes. the next two blocks. This one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he just needs to do one, actually. He just has to Yeah, do just do that one, yeah. Or this one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So just this one, and then it, then the one in nine doesn't even stop you. The problem yeah. is you've got to move the... But I think that's right, just play safe. Just play safe, move this gink. You haven't got the recovery, and then you can yep. do this one. Yeah, so he yeah, does, yeah, I like he does, that. He does do it safe. Yeah, I think that's the correct play. You just do everything as safe as possible here. You, you've got, so, you've so got a throw big the advantage. throw the one in nine now, because then you can walk around the gink. Because it, it, ultimately, other than double skulls, meh. Oh, okay, okay. I, I mean, this is the super duper safe version, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I like, I like that. I like going super safe. No, not for me. Oh, this is actually quite nice because you get to chain out the ogre, don't you? Yeah. I think chaining out the ogre is pretty nice. Yeah. He's not done it. But he's chained out the guard there and stuck him on the crocs. I mean, sticking him on the crocs is really good. But yeah. I, then, quite, I quite liked in here. Then this guard, you don't, you do follow this up just to provide extra assists. Maybe he breaks massive. Yep, huge. <coughs> The humans are in trouble here. Mm. And Kaltrim literally stuck in the middle. He's, he's got a play out. He's got a really good play out, actually. Stand him up. Guard in here or here, wherever. Uh, block this guy down on two. Then uphill blitz the crocs. Push that guy out. And then you've got a hole to run through. I'm loving that play. Yeah, nice. You've actually, like... You've actually then got like two players to screen him as well. It's better than I'd expect at this stage. <laughs> like the way the drive's gone, it's it, it, you know getting this getting this is pretty decent. Like it's it's not great, but you know it's lizards with Strider. <laughs> it's it, this is pretty decent. This is as good as it gets. Yeah, I think so. And you can make the rest of the dodges. Do you throw the ogre block on the skink? Because it's three dice and it'll save you from dodging. It's four percent fail versus the eleven percent failure on the dodge. Do you like that? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed one. Oh. R write that down, please. I'm allowed that. That, that one. Okay. I'll yeah. have a tattoo to my arm. Also, this way he doesn't get as much coming with him, but he could 2D blitz over here and then come up, and then that lets him 1D. Okay, you can 1D blitz. This is a lot risky. I don't like that. I think this no. is too risky. Yeah. Oh, Yeah, I dear. think this is too risky. <clears throat> I think he might have pushed his luck a little bit too far there. And you know, there's been so many times over the course of this tournament where he has pushed his luck and he has yes. got the dice. And this looks to be the game it's come up, he's come up short. But it's not over yet. There's still three turns, uh, four uh, turns for Strider. And it is a blodge catcher, right? Like, this isn't just trivial to get the ball off. This has got block and dodge. He needs to find an, a naked pow. It is, they are known as naked pals. That, that eyebrow there. Oh, only from Andy. Everyone else would say full power pal, but <laughs> Andy wants to say naked pal for some reason. <laughs> chat, they are naked, aren't they? <laughs> what, chat are they? <laughs> yeah, That's what he gets through. He pictures everyone at home naked just to get through this. I mean, I'm sure some will Stage be. fright. That's weird. That's a weird thought, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure some would. So, someone at home watching right now has suddenly gone, they're on to me. Oh, God. <laughs> They're on to me. I could only watch Blood Bowl in the nude. They're on. They're on to me. <laughs> so here we go. We've got three into three. Fantastic. Into three, play. into three. Like, he's going to get a bazillion hits here, isn't yep. he? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's Saurus Ping Pong. Yeah. Saurus Ping Pong, then a Crocs to tidy up. Yep. Are you really nice? Yeah. I think I, I think I apo that. Mm. I think I do because like, what else am I spending my uh, 
Apo on here. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. And and this could be the last drive. If the Saurus get the ball. But then I guess the the I guess you have to survive this turn to not lose, right? Is the yeah. other thing. I think you should have thought longer about it. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Because it's like a big decision. I, I think I think you should have thought longer about deciding. He's going to chain him. He gets the power. Oh, he's got the power. He gets the power. Maybe break. Stay, stay put. Doesn't get the AV break. Soros. Crocs can't catch. Three tackle zones. Oof. Yeah, and he's still got free skimp as well. Um, uh, we have a bug? Yeah. Oh, it might fix itself. No. I think I've got it back out of the game for a, for a few seconds. What? Let's see. It might it might fix itself over on on turnover. It might. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what happens. I I like this new color scheme. It's good. <laughs> it's mm. good. It's not running an aquarium. <laughs> yeah. It feels like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I took my little one to see some fish the other day, and they sort of watched them floating around in the tank. It was great. I think we do need to quit. We'll, we'll see. When you say floating around in the tank, that, that implies that they're they're not swimming; they're they're floating because <laughs> something bad ha yeah. bad has happened. Should should we, should we exit and uh, go to the yep. thing? All right, come back to us for a second while we kind of fix things. Uh, well, so far we can see, you know, we've got ourselves a, a, a real matchup here. I mean, Kalju can't find a really way through. Strider's you know, preventing him going any further. Um, do you think Strider's like on here to, to change things around in overtime? I, I don't think it's going to go to overtime. I think Strider might actually right close. Now. Yeah, he might close this out because it's 0-0 zero, zero currently. He's just stolen the ball. He's got the halfway line. And we're, we're, we're about to find out. We're diving back in. Here we go. Back into the aquarium we go. <laughs> or not, as it seems now to. No. Mm. <coughs> Could have talked about star signs. Are you Aquarius? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm a Virgo. Do you, do, are, you, are you star sign people? No, I've no idea what they are. I don't know what that is. No. No. People, <laughs> no. I, I, I know I'm a Libra. You know that. Yeah. I know what I am, but someone goes, oh, you are such a Capricorn. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but you're wrong. I'm not. No. <clears throat> It's, it also it fascinates people people are into rocks and crystals. That's that. I'm not into that, but I'm just saying. People, some people are really into like, oh yeah, your your stone is this. You're 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 this kind of stone. I'm like, I I don't know what you're on about. Anyone in chat? Know what people talk about, about stones? And do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? No idea. No idea. No, absolutely not. Okay, you're looking at me like I've I've j I've just committed a crime. Like, that's such a sin. <laughs> wow, uh, gets a one die foul. Maybe you could be a <laughs> stoner. Maybe I mean that's a. That's a... <laughs> No, definitely not that. I don't think that's the technical term. But I'm, I'm going to research this right now. Oh, this okay. is a, this is a thing. Stop making me feel like I'm crazy. This is definitely a thing. <laughs> Can you Google what what is someone called who's into stones? <laughs> I think so. What's a stone person called? <laughs> oh, we have a failed dodge. Um, yep. Unbelievable. We've got tack on the ball, but you know, pretty easy clear. Yeah. Pretty Richard. easy double clear. Yeah. But you know. Strider he's, really he's, wants to score. He's on. He's down one reroll himself. You know, Strider really wants to score here and and put this to bed. Yeah. So he's cleared the tackle off. But really? now the push will not clear the guarder, right? No. Yes, because he's had to use the open square. I still think you blitz the guarder here. Oh yeah. That is just one hundred percent the safest play. Yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, he might be able to do it because he can now blitz the guard in the centre of the field. He's got a dinosaur that can run around and punch south. That, yeah, I think that's what he's... Excuse me, I think that's what he's up to. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, then then he just stands up here, I guess. But how yeah. does he get through as well? It's That's a good pal. The, the problem with this is... Yeah, that's like... That guarantees freeing the skink. But the problem is, if he done this blitz and got the power then he's got another guy over here right to, yeah. to make the space forward and that, this makes it more conservative but a bit like you know lower lower risk but also lower reward yeah and he's got to move he can't stand there because his cage corners are based um it, it, it's quite easy to then expose the skink um and that exposed skink could just get himself into a world of trouble i mean it's not that easy right there's still strength four yeah 
Yeah, it's block. Casual. Just play. Just imagine you're Chunter for a second, right? <laughs> if you were Chunter, you would think that that ball is incredibly exposed. Yeah, but uh, you know, we're not Chunter. We're not Chunter, no. <laughs> um, this is this is arguably uh, worse, really. Yeah. Yeah, because he had to make this hit. Like you know, now he's running into like a strength five, right? So so he really had to try and defend against a strength five there. Yeah. If the, if the Crocs can find a, a home. I mean, you could just simply uphill the Crocs easily, 1D, maybe dodge off for a 2D, and then uh, yeah, yeah. your uncle. I, I've got, I've, I've gone deep into some serious. It, it, I wasn't thinking stones was the wrong thing. Crystals. That's what I was right. thinking. People whoa, are into whoa, crystals. Whoa, that's an entirely different level of drugs. Yeah, no, 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 no. Right. Whoa. Apparently, okay. Listen to this. People are into like things like where they place a series of of stones and crystals along their chakras. And they string yeah. together seven linear energy portals and the vibrations and properties of crystals, some believe, cleanse your chakras and uh, your lingering negative energies. So, hey. That's cool. That's not me. <laughs> Are you into crystals? Let us know, chat. Because I am fascinated <laughs> by what any of that just meant. <laughs> I'm, I'm confuzzled. I mean, this is it. Caldrip only has to stop the score and get to overtime. The problem is, if he gets to <laughs> overtime, I'm not liking his chances, right? Without rerolls versus one from Strider, but. Yeah. It's got a shot. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So now he's got two two on the ball. Oh, sorry, two on the Crocs. If the Crocs falls over, would you take the four plus leap into the square? Oh, wow. Yeah. Four jump, plus leap. Jump, Andy. Four, jump, four plus jump. So four plus jump. Sorry, I get with the lingo. Um, Cold Troop's not doing it. He's. It looks like he's pushed him. Oh, oh my he, God. he can do it now. It's wow. Massive cars. And Big Strider's re, uh, Strider's Apple is gone. So now, over time, you know, equity rising for Cold Troop. It just keeps happening, lads. It just keeps happening for him. He's doing it. We keep rolling. Oh, and he's the skull. He's got oh, no re rolls. rolls. No re rolls. Yep, that's the skull. That's down. Man down. And that was for two on the ball, right? Yeah, potentially he'd have like yeah, the yeah, push yeah. was no good, right? You have to power, yeah. Power. But yeah, it, it's probably better than doing the jump straight off because if you get the power, then you just get the hit, mm. and if you get the push, you can still do the jump. So probably pretty good to do it that way. Yeah, he just got a little unlucky. Yeah. Now he gets to surf. Uh, oh no, he doesn't. No. I, thought, I thought he was free for a second. Um, he, he could do like if you. Uh, no. 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 No, there's a limit to how to, <laughs> to what people should do, and <laughs> that is well well beyond the limit. But he has to go and stick this in scoring range, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just concentrate on getting scoring range. Just blitz blitz with this guy and move yeah. down the field and move you to the skin stand with him. Yeah, and then you can have a, a pretty solid chance of scoring without being it's going to work. Here we go. Yeah. Probably best result there because you're not pushing the lineman south rather than you're never powering and following. Yep. Hundred percent surf. No, he does. the surf there, the double surf is is a terrible play. Like if you one nil up, do it as a fun thing, right? But yeah. but here you have to you have to get downfield. Yeah. I like this. Is he going to need go for it? I don't. I, I, it looks very heavily not like that. Skink is so fast. This isn't Black Ops. These are proper teams. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing, right? Goblins could never make this kind of play, could they? And uh, skinks just do it easily. Yeah, I like what he's done with the Saurus going so wide that anything now on the line of scrimmage is going to struggle to get through. And the other thing he's going to do is put an air gap in so potentially the humans have got to dodge twice, not just once. Yeah. That's really strong. Yeah, this is really, really good. Looks over. It looks like the fairy tale. Oh, it's coming to an end. Coming to an end, yeah. Oh. The AV break. Pow into pow. And then you just yeah, ste this. steal this as well. Lovely. I think I'd defend the middle skink out of that if given the choice because I think the only thing the humans are going to be able to do is base the ball. Like th via killing a skink in the middle. Oh, so that gives you like the, the screen there as well to stop coming around here like one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. 
So that stops that one a bit. So um, I th actually think it was better where he was. I think he was better. I think this was best, actually. I, I guess now this forces this blitz and yep. the ball base. And he has but. to power it. Yeah. So that's to free up the mighty blow blitz up. And he has to... Well, I say he has to take it down. If you get it at the right angle, he can, he can come at it slightly differently. Where's the where's the human catcher here? Is that the? I think it's, I think it's this one. Yep. Oh, so it's, that's not even it's not even viable to do any crazy stuff. No. Nope. Tag, tag these guys. Blitz here. Try and get in. The problem is the free dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, chat. Caltrue forgot to cleanse his chakra before the game. <laughs> it, it might have been a thing. Might have been. Wasn't thinking about his crystals. Wasn't thinking about his crystals, honestly. Could be a completely it. different outcome. Yeah, that Here it is. It. Yeah, because it's turn 16. The last turn. And Strider. Strides. Strides. Thank you. <laughs> into the final, the grand final against Ooh. Diomed and gives us a best of three, which we are looking forward to immensely. Uh, GG's to Kyle, Jimmy. What, what, a, what a, I mean, you mentioned a fairy tale there. It's been a journey, Jimmy. It's been a journey for him, and it's been, it's been entertaining for us watching at home. Yeah, it's been incredible, right? You know, humans are not the best race in Blood Bowl, and obviously he's just, he's just great at pilot, piloting them, and he's, he's done himself proud for sure. Was there, was there a moment there, Andy, that Caljuk could have turned things around, or did, was Strider just too strong uh, in that in the center of the field there to, for him to break through? So in, I think going into the first half, he had the opportunity potentially to try and uh, capitalize on Strider not being able to score. I, I would have liked to have seen him try his bag of crazy and see if he could have put something <laughs> in, in, in. Right, that, that could then have tipped this around. Or, or he should have just gone and scored a little bit quicker. I always felt that trying an eight-turn drive against Lizards is really challenging, really, really hard. Right? Yeah. Focus on just making sure you do get it in, and then you defend the last couple of turns. Yeah, I mean, let's let's think about. I mean, I mean, Orcs versus Lizards in our best of three. Is that is that a a race matchup that we're we're looking forward to? This is going to be quite frenetic here. Do you think, Jimmy? I wouldn't say frenetic, but it's going to be interesting. <laughs> you know, it was a big, big tactical battle, Diamond versus Strider, the first one, and I do think it favours the Lizard Men. I think the racial matchup does favour the Lizard Men, but but it's it, again to say interesting again for Dimmy that the four guard biggins, you know, that that gives uh, it something different that Orcs don't normally have, and yeah. if he can keep them together, he can actually then bully the Lizard Men. So that's that's going to be something to watch. Indeed, yeah. I mean, Strider obviously has just has just competed. We're going to have a very shortly. We'll go to like a break and give Strider some time and uh, for us to get things ready for our, our best of three here. Um, will that be kind of like a, a good way to kind of, uh, I guess, get, get loose prior to this best of three? Or do you think that, that fatigue we've talked about, do you think that's a big factor here? Or Strider just take this in his stride as we've talked about and just <laughs> go into this one feeling fresh and feeling good to go? I'm, I'm super curious to see how Strider plays game one, right? Is he going to be a little bit tired? I think if it goes to a fourth game, you've got to fancy Diomed then, right? He's, there's no way you don't play fatigue in game four. We, yeah. we were casting yesterday and we mentioned the you know, game four is it's challenging, isn't it, getting all the way through? So yeah. let's let's see what it's like for the players. Yeah, we've got a revenge story here as well. Here, you know, I mean, Strider probably biting in the bit for a second opportunity here to to go up to toe to toe um, with Diamond after what happened yesterday. But do you think with Diamond having played Strider yesterday, do you think we'll feel confident because of that experience and already coming out one on top? Yeah, maybe, maybe that maybe he'll draw experience from that. But it, it was interesting, though, wasn't it? Like, it was so close to eight times out of nine. If Strider makes that dodge, he probably just scores on Diamond's drive. And Diamond had to roll a five plus to score, so it could have so easily been one nil to, uh, or even two nil to Strider. So, yeah, I think as, as much as, you know, Diamond's played really great and he's got a really good team build, I still think, I still fancy Strider to win this one. All righty. Oh, well, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, indeed. Jimmy's predictions have come out again. So, so, sorry, Strider. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Already apologizing. Uh, let's have a look here and see uh, how our brackets look uh, and, and exactly what is going to be coming your way uh, very soon uh, in our lower bracket. You can see this is how things f finished up here. Our lower bracket, we started last weekend with 16. We are now down to two. You can see here in our lower bracket, our final has just taken place with Caljoop losing out 1-0, the humans out of our competition to the Lizard men of Strider uh, who go through to that winner bracket well the grand finals against the current winner bracket finalist winner uh, which is a uh, diamond ready and waiting to take him on here but I mean could you have I mean could you have predicted any of this I mean the, the winner bracket here as well if you you know 
odds on with talking about odds and kind of plausibility of your know, predictions in here. Diamond Strider, a worthy final, Andy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, are you asking me if I could have predicted it or Jimmy if he could have predicted it? <laughs> I'm not going to ask Jimmy for a prediction ever again. Okay. I'm just going to leave that, leave that way. But you personally, what was what's your vibes? Um, so I wouldn't have pulled these two out particularly, but if you'd have said to me of the, of the 16 and put these in an order, I would have put them in the, probably the top six or seven, I think, for sure. They're both very strong coaches. Very, very strong. I mean, you, can you see this being a, a, a I mean, is it going to go I mean, all to three games here, Jimmy? I think we talked about this before the actual show started here, and we were saying if this was our final, this could be one which could go the distance here and go all three games. Yeah, not just all three games. All three could go to overtime as well. This could, this yeah. could be really, really close. <laughs> but uh, talking about the predictions, I, I will say I did predict Strider to come through the loser's bracket. Um, I, but originally, you know, we, we had the challenge and we mapped out the whole thing. I had Elliot coming through the winner's bracket. Obviously, he went out <laughs> his first opportunity he could. But I did predict Strider to come through the loser bracket. You know, Strider's super strong, Lizard's super strong, and I wouldn't bet against him now. Okay, interesting. I mean, I mean, money-wise there as well. Prize money they're going to Caltroop, six hundred dollars. Uh, the richer as well for third third place. I mean, GGS as well. Caltroop's had a real ride. We talked about a roller coaster ride getting to this position, um, but be very happy with third place, right? Absolutely. I think he's also done something else, right? He's he's invigorated the Twitch community, and people know like, if they didn't know who he was before, they do know who he is now, and they might see him on the ladder, spin into him, and suddenly, oh, I'm playing this this famous guy. He's got a boxer crazy. I like this. This yeah. is going to be great. Right, he, he, he's he's a success story from this weekend for sure. Yeah, I mean that's one of the wonderful things about this. We said this last weekend as well. You see the different players that are kind of um you, uh, you know, on our brackets. Go and follow these players. Go and go and find that you know, streams. Go and check them out and see exactly what they're up to. Because uh, those who are streaming, I mean, like you guys do too. I mean, it's it's fantastic. The community is growing all the time, and and this only makes it even better. I mean, look at the look at this. We keep, we said this yesterday, but this is incredible. The fact that this has kind of grown to this uh, you know the season finals here uh, in a studio right now. Um, but I mean, this is only a, a great thing for the game moving forward, isn't it, Jimmy? The fact that all these players celebrated a chance for new people to find them and the community to continue growing and evolving uh, as well yeah it's incredible like nakon's you know commitment to the game to, to to do all of this for us it's it's absolutely fantastic yeah couldn't be happier couldn't be happier indeed well we have ourselves a serious serious uh best of three coming our way the grand finals is coming up very very shortly of course i uh, giving our players a quick break there particularly strider to uh, to freshen up uh, ahead of uh, that best of three um do not get anywhere a short break from us here on broadcast here grab yourself a sandwich or a refreshment uh crystals chakras whatever you need to do Okay, if you just joined us, you're thinking, what are you talking about? Don't worry, go back and watch the VOD, you'll, you'll see. Uh, we have loads more here on our Blood Bowl 3 season finals. Look forward to our grand finals coming your way after a short break. We'll see you in just a bit.